afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, get my notes up. Cool. Um, yeah, so what I'd like to talk about today is um, something that I, th I think has been in my mind a bit over the last few months. It's about trying to see, one well, titled either seeing through the lenses of God or sort of how to maybe seeing other people and yourself as maybe God sees. I think it's, I mean, it's a huge topic, obviously, mm -hmm. and you no, know, it's, um, you know, when we are, as a Christian, we kind of really want to um, be more like Jesus, and that includes, obviously, yeah, includes to look um, at things as Jesus would look. And, um, and I feel like over the last couple of months, I've learned a little bit on that. I mean, I'm really just probably going to touch, I mean, there's, there's the end of the topic, a surface of that, and, 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 um, and there's so much more I can say about that. But yeah, I just want to, sh want to share a little bit of maybe what I've learned um, over the last, uh, yeah, over the last few months months and so two points sort of or two topics I guess one is well they're related to one another so how do you see other people first of all and um, and through that I mean what's the best way to, to, to see maybe how uh, God uh, sees or how Jesus sees other people well it's, I mean I guess we should look into the Bible and see you know what encounters of the Jesus and how has Jesus really looked into uh, well, how has he dealt with people and how has he looked at people um, so for that if you could turn to Luke 19 um, verse 1 um, which is a yeah, very well-known um, story about Jesus and Zacchaeus. Um, and we pick up in verse 1, where it says, so Luke 19, verse 1, um, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was chief tax collector and was very wealthy, or was very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short and he could not see over the crowd, so he ran ahead and climbed uh, um, some fig tree um, to see him, and since Jesus, Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here, and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Um, so what I found interesting really on from this is sort of these two, two ways of how maybe, yeah, how, how, Jesus, how, how, how you could see Zacchaeus from that. So I mean, the people... You know, it's not 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 said it not that much explicitly, but what I would imagine the people were seeing as Zacchaeus, who you know he was a tax collector, he was a chief tax collector, in fact, so like the chief executive of the HMRC. But at that time, being someone who's you know who you probably although nowadays you get I guess only get tax back rather than having to claim more taxes, but um, but he was someone who was very not popular, and you know, he was he was seen as someone you know, he was a Jew, I guess, and. Someone to be, no, they're known to be corrupt, who just take more money as they're, than they're supposed to, and the people can't do anything about it. Um, and, and, and someone who's really seen as a sort of traitor, betrayer of the Jews, uh, of Jewish people, because they're basically helping the Roman people who, are, who con came and conquered that the land to, to, to take money from them to give it to you know, the Romans who are worshipping, obviously, uh, other pagan gods, or, and obviously you know, enriching themselves for that. And, um, and you are short. And, you know, if I was one of the people in the crowd who probably would have, you know, if I'm, if I'm working and I would need to pay taxes and probably would have dealt with him, then I would probably have seen him as somewhat, as, you know, a bit, our well, natural reaction, I think, would be a bit like, a bit of a schadenfreude, where I feel like, you know, this guy, you know, he, he, he wants to see Jesus, we can see Jesus, but he's a bit short, so, you know, he's, he's now like, you know, having to climb up a tree to just peek at, at Jesus through there, and, um, and um, really having to humiliate himself, really, because mm -hmm. first it says you know, he was running towards, towards uh, what's it? He ran ahead. So running at that time is also something that is not very common. It's not nowadays you know, where you are like, with nice, and nice jeans or something like that, you know, with like, tunics and uh, trying to mm -hmm. run to something that's already quite, quite a humility. And then trying to climb up a tree. I'm not sure. Who, how many of you have climbed up a tree, really? Not okay, quite, 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 quite a few, yes. Um, maybe let, let me see. What is the reason that you climbed up a tree? Fun. Fun. Taking fruits. Taking fruits. 
very nice. Uh, I don't even think I've ever climbed a tree. I don't think I've ever really climbed, climbed a tree. And I think, you know, for a short guy to climb up a tree as well, I think that is quite, quite, a, firstly quite impressive. But, I mean, the people, I think they were like, you know, you can see that in verse 7, when they said, you know, the people saw this and began to mat- he has gone, so Jesus has gone to be a guest of a sinner. So they obviously not feel like this guy is a sinner. He is, um, you know, not welcome. And um, and I guess yeah, the people are not not have a very positive impression of him, even though you no. Know, uh, but where's Jesus? What does Jesus see? I think, you know, Jesus. You no, know, when he saw saw him, he probably knows what, who he was. I mean, I guess he's God and he sees it. Um, and um, he, he could probably also see you know, all the sins he's done, or how much he's. You know, I guess. Uh, what do you call that? And cheated people, how much he's pain he has caused really by, you know, um, t- taking all this money for himself. Um, but but what is it that Jesus actually focused on in this case, which I find just very, really encouraging, I think, what well, really, like, convicting is to see he, he, he saw actually what, um, he looked at the heart really of Zacchaeus. And I think you know, one of the things that is summarized, you know, of how God looks at us is in 1 Samuel 16, uh, verse 7, where it says, um, you know, well, the last verse is that people look at the outward experience, but the Lord looks at the heart. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that is actually like, you know, I guess the summary of maybe my sermon, so, um, but, which is like, you know, God looks at the heart and looks at, look at Zacchaeus, um, yeah. that he was trying, and that he was really like, you know, even though despite all his, what he's done, and despite, uh, you know, all these challenges, he actually tried to see Jesus, and he tried to um, go and, and, and uh, yeah, and, and really wanted to, to see him, and, and, what, and then the reaction that Jesus, and then what Jesus then proceeded to do was, I think, also really re- remarkable. It's like that he was then uh, inviting, well, he invited himself over, really, but um, just really what he wanted to do is he spent, he meant he was asking him to spend time really with Zacchaeus. So mm-hmm. and um, and went there, and so so for me, that's like in some of our relationships, I feel um, I can sometimes see sort of all these wrong, all the things that are not correct of, of some other people. Um, one, for example, now, someone who I spend a lot of time with is obviously my wife. Um, and and <laughs> maybe not as much as you'd like to, uh, so I'm just traveling a bit. But, um, but I think, you know, one thing I can, I learned over the last couple of months is just, I often feel like I, I focus on these negative, like on these shortcomings, I guess, of, 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 of Gene. Um, yeah, I, I don't know really. I'm not even sure what, what shortcomings he's talking about now. <laughs> but um, but just like you know, it's, it's things that that just like oh, it would be nice if she could do that. There are some things that maybe I'm better in, and then I can focus a lot on that, and maybe even think about. And then what I first maybe do, or what I tend to sometimes do, is like just say it out directly, like without any sort of regard of whether it's an appropriate time or not. Just say, oh, actually, I think that you know, he should probably do this and this, or she should do that and that. Um, but I think, I mean, if you see here Jesus, how he looks at you know, Zacchaeus, he was, the first thing he said was not, oh, you need to give back, to give back you know, half of your possessions to the poor, as he maybe did for the rich young ruler who was in the chapter before. But what he did is, like, he, he wanted to spend time with Zacchaeus. And I think that's, that really helped me to really learn, okay, I, well, a relationship, obviously, maybe this is an obvious point, but I don't, I don't know, I felt like even being married now for a year or something, that, that, that's something that still do, like, where just, you know, instead of first go and, you know, have a relationship with someone or just you know, spend time, I first kind of focused on, a, on, the, on the negative bits and feel like, oh, this needs to be changed, and then fix, fix that, and as me, obviously that affects, like, you know, maybe the Jews, they were also affected by them, but um, by, this, by the sins or, or what, um, what Zacchaeus has done. But, yeah, I mean, I think just, it's, it's such a great um, example, actually, that, that Jesus is the one who, um, yeah, looks at the heart and looks at the intentions, look and looks at um, the yeah, I, yeah, it's really just the heart and, and 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 goes looks past the sins and really what he looks at is with love towards Zacchaeus, really with love and, and knowing what is sort of um, yeah the and, and really building up the relationship with him and 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 we can see what 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 the result from that was in the end is is in verse eight where we see is that you know Zacchaeus actually. Yeah, he, he changed and repented. So, one lesson I, I guess I learned is that you know, when, if you want to fix someone, you don't fix them by just telling them the solutions. You know, I think, uh, but you know, you just you just love them. I think, and and, and, and Jesus loved other people, and and they, well, they they repent. They 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 feel the love, and and, and um, they they saw the love that you know, 
Jesus and God has and they so that they were convicted to change. And um, and that's I guess yeah, so if we go towards other people as we should I guess really you know, point them to God, point them to Jesus and, and not say, Oh you no, know, maybe that's you're doing that wrong, you should do this. Um, so I think that's that's one of the points I feel like I've learned and yeah, again that was sort of resonated with me very strongly two weeks ago when JP and Rose were talking about sort of um, words you probably sh- um, well, uh, uh, better not use as much, which where one of you should and ought and must or something like that, whereas these kind of teaching words, but it's it's um, but rather we should you know really want, but there's no should. I know I'm saying lots of shoulds, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it is difficult. I felt yeah. So uh, but um, but yeah, it's really just the love itself for, for, for that that I think you know we we could. Focus on seeing the, the intentions, the heart of, of someone. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that you know we shouldn't have, or well, we don't have, we must not, or whatever. I can't, I can't give it up. But, <laughs> um, we don't have any truth, like you know. There, there's, uh, um, God, you know, Jesus obviously told people what the truth is as well. We can see that with the young rich ruler, what he needed to do, what he what he commanded them. But you know, truth and comes with, you know, we needs to come with love as well, mm-hmm. and. Um, so, so the question I guess we would like to ask is: that what, what is the first thing when we look at other people? I mean, some, maybe sometimes you know we just look, we look at hard and really want to help them. But other times, I think I, I, I can be very like you know, for me at least, you know, seeing just past the problems and the sins and um, maybe being sort of judgmental. But uh, and then, but yeah, so maybe that's something to think about. So sort of really not focusing on the problems, but really on. Um, and the sins, but really on love and really helping the people to to be um, to be with God. Um, so that's sort of my first kind of point. Um, obviously, for that, there's another point I think which i have not really touching on because I I found it diff- 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 for myself very difficult. It's like you know when we look at other people, especially not not people not maybe with you know close friendships, but with just colleagues or friends and um, and just people in general in our community I think you know another thing is one thing I feel like I realize I need to do more but it, yeah I think still learning is, is to see that um, you know we actually now without God we are actually lost and I think coming from you know, a place where I've not actually known God much before I can sometimes when I look at other people I think oh they seem to have a nice life they seem to you know, why should I really enjoy what like bother inviting them to church or why should I really tell them about God? Um, but you know, in the end actually how God sees them is actually people who are lost as well. And um, I think that's something we should also you know, keep in mind. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna expand on that too much uh, for, for this because yeah, I'm I'm still learning on that. I'm not actually sure exactly what I want to sh- would like to share on this, but I think there's one thing I just really felt like I needed to bring that up because I think that's that, that is yeah very very important as we just think of in general our community and our, and uh, yeah as we how can we help and maybe in a wedding country person it's always a very um, great opportunity to bring people um, I think to to God um, or to reach out to them and the other thing I was thinking of is how do we see how do we look at ourselves and maybe I'm just more of a too self self centered person but um, I was just thinking like you know for a lot of times, when I, for me, that I, I go to between two extremes. One is sort of not taking sin very seriously, and the other being kind of being too harsh and too unloving towards me. So, so one side is like not taking sin, sin seriously, sort of a maybe a um, well, kind of self righteousness in saying like, oh, I'm doing a lot of these good things, so yeah, this sin I don't really like, don't need to, um, don't need to, don't need to bother about that. But I mean, God sees all, all sin as being equal and. Um, and uh, and and I think for that I I really like was one thing I I, I feel like struggled with uh, quite a bit over the last couple of months is is laziness. It's feeling like I'm not spending or I'm not actually doing things what I should do and, and you know spending quite a considerable amount of time doing work to do like yeah to to. I, I have these browser games which I, which I play, and I spend too much time on that. Gene really finds it really annoying that I play that in general. And I think that, that that's, has, that's, that's a lot of good point, uh, like a good conviction behind that. And I think, and for me, I, I was like, oh yeah, I mean, it's it is a bit of an issue, but you know, I'm 
sort of getting things done and I like, you know, it's, everyone needs some break and, you know, this is the center thing where you, um, it, is, it, is, it is dangerous and, and for me I was kind of talking about it, um, but um, like not, not really like, you know, really with an earnest heart to just say, oh, I, no, I want to really make sure to see whether that is an issue or not. And I was always, there's always this, you know, um, you know, always a lot of thoughts coming from, you know, it's almost like, you know, angel and devil are kind of trying to, <laughs> to talk to you from each side. And, and, and I was really confused and I really felt like um, it's uh, like in, in one of the, in, I wish I had put it, I thought I put it in there. Anyway, but, but in, <laughs> in, one, in the scripture which talks about, you know, it's, it's like, um, where I feel, feel, like, feel like waves are like tossed, like tossed around. I wish I was, was. Can anyone can help me out? I think it's James. James. Uh, it's Jacob chapter one. Yes. Um, let me let me quickly get there. Uh, James. I'm dropping all James. 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 Um, thank you. Yeah, it's very good. You guys are you guys are great. Um, yes. Uh, so James chapter one verse um, six, I guess. Um, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts it is like a wave of sea, blown and tossed by the wind. And I felt a lot like that when I was in that situation, like, oh, what is the right thing? What should I be doing? And for that, actually, actually yeah, opening yourself has helped me that, and realizing, you know, if you look at Luke 6, verse 47 to 48, um, I heard the scripture a lot before, and but... I don't feel like I've emotionally resonated to, to that. And um, I remember Tim sharing that um, you know, a, f a few months or years maybe a ago. Um, where it's, but he emphasizes that quite a lot where it's about the wise and the foolish builder. So in verse 47 it says, As for everyone, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundations on rock. When the flood came, the torrent struck that the house uh, struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. Um, so, what is what kind of you know, Tim was talking about in that case is like, is, and I think that's very much so. Our faith needs to be founded on something that is you know, solid, and that is on God, and I think on the on the Bible, on the truth, really. Mm -hmm. And um, what what helped me with that, so taking to take maybe since a bit more seriously to see, is, is really to go back to the Bible and see what does it actually say. What is it? What does what does God tell, tell me, actually, whether what I'm doing right now is, is, is correct or not? And, um, and the Bible has been really helpful for me. And so James 4, 17, for example, you don't have to turn there. It says, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do but doesn't do it, it is sin for them. So let me ask you, are there any sort of sins that you're maybe putting in the back burner that actually now, you know, that you're just maybe afraid to deal with? And I think that was for me. I was not like... I just felt like, oh, it's too busy, I can't, you know, there's too many things going on. But it's like some of these things, these things are important, I think, and important for us as Christians to, you know, God sees us, as, sees us with all our flaws and loves us, but he also sees the sin and also sees us maybe not dealing with that. And I think it's, yeah, I think for me that to learn is really important to not really take anything just like to, well, not, nothing that I just not properly deal with. Where in this case, this was something I didn't properly deal with because I, was just not was something that affected me, but it was not something. And, but it was something that I really wanted, didn't didn't feel like ready to give up or something like that. So, um, so and so that's what I'm saying. Like I think it's um, important when we look at ourselves to look at it something that is based on, on, on God, based on the truth, and really based on um, yeah, based 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 on what really God says. And, and um, another verse which is really helpful found for me is this one. Peter verse five, one Peter five verse eight. Um, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Um, and yes, when we look at ourselves, we should maybe uh, look at be be alert and sober, because the devil is, you know, trying every taking every opportunity to to grab hold of of um, of us. And yeah, and for me also, what it really helps is other people helping, like opening up myself to other people. I feel like. I chat with Ben a lot and Reinhardt as well, and, and it really helped me to just yeah to, to really just talk about it. I think, yeah. 
and, and, and not be afraid to talk about it, not be afraid that, you know, I would put myself to shame or something like that. And, and that's something, again, with the Bible, with Zacchaeus is a, is a good example where he was someone who did, you know, who, who did try, you know, without feeling like, without any, um, without being afraid of, you know, humiliating himself or, you know, looking like a fool or something like that. Um, so, so, yeah, that's, I think, when, when we not deal with things seriously. Another point, I think, is, is to not, to, when you are being too harsh to yourself. And I think this is where, another, in some ways, is another form of self-righteousness is where I think um, where it can be like performance-based. I think last few weeks, again, I felt there were so many kind of things going on, and I felt like emotionally just extremely, like, oh, I'm not doing well with being patient towards Jean. I'm not feeling really anxious about all my work. I have... Uh, and I shouldn't feel anxious about my work. I shouldn't be impatient because you know that's that's what the Bible says, and that's um, you know we can just give things to God. But uh, and the more I'm trying to do that, the less I've, uh, it just helps. Like yeah, for for maybe a few uh, few minutes or something like that. But really, I'm not. I'm actually like trying to work it out myself. Um, but yeah, in, in the end, that's. Um, that really helped me. Helped me really like, emotionally, like I don't know, really shaken and very um, just where I'm just being very unloving to myself. And I think that's where I really focused on G- on God's love towards us and the same love that He showed to Zacchaeus, and the same love that He you know sh- um, showed on the cross. Really, is is the love that you know, despite all our sort of weaknesses, despite our shortcomings, despite us not meeting the standards, because we are not really going to meet the standards. We are not going to. Uh, be perfect, and we're not going to uh, be able to, you know, completely rid ourselves from all anxieties and, and be just patient all the time and, and, not, and not be lazy at all the time. Um, but you know, what God looks and what God's looking for, I guess, is, is I guess, really our heart again. And um, and so what I want to feel, feel like it's like you know, just feeling like looking at God and how God would look at us help me to find. Or I just feel like I learned that. You know that's that really helps me to want to get out to to um, yeah to to stop actually thinking about myself really and just think, think about God and think about you know that that it's it's in the end these are things are not that not as important as my relationship with God um, so yeah so this is one another verse I think that's really like amazing is is that in John fifteen five. Um, where, it's, where it says that, you know, uh, talking about the vine and branches. So I am the vine, you are the branches. So Jesus is saying, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Mm-hmm. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm-hmm. And I felt very much that I can do nothing, really. Like, you know, all I'm doing is, is, is I'm tr- well, trying to please God. But, you know, with, without God, that's, that's just not possible. And we can't, um, we, we just can't, mm-hmm. can't really can't, can't do that, and, um, and everything we achieve is, is all really through God, and that's something that helped me realize in that, and how looking at ourselves, that we are not just, we're looking at me, it's not looking at, oh, I don't know, PhD student, or I don't know, whatever job role you're doing, and, and, and but looking at you as just a, just a person, and, and a lost child in some ways, and who come back, uh, if you're a Christian, and, and someone who's trying to really please, please God, and, um, and yeah, so so he sees our hearts, so our sins, and where we shouldn't neglect sort of our sins, we should also, I think, in the end, um, really, really focus and realize on you know, it's, it is God in the end who who helps us overcome them, and who uh, through whom we can, um, yeah, for whom we really can can be in the end ourselves, really, you know, or we can really feel the joy that you know, feel, feel, feel without these burdens that that all kind of can can be with us. Um, and again, a question maybe I want to ask is like, you know, what what things do you need to really let go and you know just do it through God rather than doing it through yourself? What things maybe are you trying to work it out yourself in a, in a sort of self righteous way? Thing like, oh, I want to do, I want to get through it so I can feel good about myself, so I can say, oh, God, I've done, I've done, I've ticked the boxes, I've I've did what I should be doing. Um, but actually, it's not. But 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 maybe. These which ones which which we should uh, more try to do it um, 
no, we do it for God and do it through God and saying like, you know, we can't do anything and if anything, that anything that, that we actually do is through God and, and that's, you know, that's, that is really bringing, really giving the glory actually to God and that's something I feel is difficult, you know, sometimes for, for me, someone as, I guess, being always, I, I was growing up, I grew up as a, you know, um, without any belief and you know, obviously when I was, when I was coming from a quite academic family, you know, it's all about, you know, doing, doing well in school and doing well in, 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 yeah, in, in your life and, and really giving that up to God I think it's still, still a struggle for me um, but yeah something I feel like I've learned and realized more but I still, yeah, I st I still need to well, st st there's still so much I need to learn through that um, so yes yeah, so I think that these are just kind of the two bits I wanted to talk about so how to how are we looking at other people and how are we looking at ourselves there's yeah, as I said, I think there's so much more like, one should cover, but I don't know, I just hope it can be helpful. So in summary, I just want to say, look, if we, if we want to imitate um, to looking at other people and ourselves as through God, uh, we need to look at them look, kind of with love, um, with grace, with truth, and not with in somewhat in a performance-based thinking. Um, but really, like, really just with, with spending time with them and, and emotionally sort of connect um, and when looking at ourselves again, yeah, not yeah, not not performance based, and not thinking like, oh, this is, you know, I'm I'm actually the one who's good or in self righteous way, but actually thinking like, whatever we do and whatever we can do, that is really through God who gives us the strength, gives us the ability, and gives us, you know, blesses us through that. So um, yeah, that's that's all. And maybe let's close up with a prayer um, as we um, close the sermon. Uh, yeah. So it's, Dear God, um, yeah, thank you so much, Lord, that you are you, know, you are just an amazing God. That you you want to spend time with us. You want to have a relationship with us. And you know, so often for us, we maybe might not take that opportunity, Lord. But um, but you know, you through, but you you have just this amazing love for us. That um, and I really pray that we can um, use that. Or we can just out of your love overflow that to towards other people and. Also, it's the same way to ourselves, and really focusing on the, um, yeah, focus on your love and focus on the heart, and, and not on the, um, yeah, on what is maybe the actual result in terms of performance and things. So, I pray that we can, you know, as love other people as, as uh, you love them, uh, build the relationships as you would like us to do, and uh, pray that we can do that with, you know, with, with the truth. We're basing on on, on your word, Lord. Uh, not, not, uh, and uh, and with grace, Lord, and um, we pray that we, as we see ourselves, Lord, that we can make sure not to neglect our own sins, but in the end, still focus on that. This is your, it's, you know, we do all these things. We can only do these things through you, and um, so without you, we are just we can really do nothing. And just we are so grateful uh, that that you 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 do have give us this uh, opportunity that you bless us with, you know, a relationship with you, and that you send your son to the cross so we can enjoy a relationship with you, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, and uh, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.